Please subscribe and share this video with your friends. Hey, welcome back to The Dating Den. I get to say it this time. I'm Marnie Batista. I'm here with the super hot, ultra smart, cool Christian Anderson. Woo. Hi, boy. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? A little <laughs> embarrassing, right? Nice, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, All right. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about data dating. And uh, it's a term used to really take away all the uh, preconceived notions and pressure we put upon dating sometimes. Because if you are a dignified dater, you're not just looking for a hookup and a little bit of ding dang in the wing wing. Right. You're actually looking for some substance. Right. So, but sometimes that can add some unneeded pressure. And data dating is a way where it allows you to just step back, relax, and enjoy the experience and gather information. And have fun. So at Dating with Dignity, I have a 10 step process that I take people through, right? And you do all this stuff on the inside and then when you get to the outside work and the actual practicality of dating you mm -hmm. are collecting data mm -hmm. about other people mm -hmm. and also really important you're having fun mm -hmm. right because dating is fun yes okay so how can you make a date fun while you're collecting information so at the seminar we had um last week mm -hmm. people were asking the men mm -hmm. you know how can a woman find out some important things about him in terms of his goals and his values and his faith and you know who he is on the inside so how can she ask that without sounding like you know she's um, interviewing you and in a way that you don't think like she's desperate or needy sure. or her eggs are burning a hole inside of her <laughs> So uh, yeah, I think the most important thing is to, to create a platform where you can have um, loose, casual conversation. And I think the best place for that to happen is grab coffee. Coffee. If, if, if you're going on these dates and you're actually looking for a substantial relationship, then you don't want to be spending a lot of time and money because some of these guys might not work out. So meet up for coffee because it allows yeah. this to be the most important thing. Right. I used to, you know, if you want to go bowling and do all those other things, that's awesome too because that's a fun activity where you guys get to be silly and goofy. However, if, if it's just an hour and a half, two hours, you sit down, you grab coffee. Now this is the most important action. You're only spending like 10 bucks on a cup of coffee and you get to know each other and right. talk and talk. And that's what kind of is the action of the date is really getting to know each other. Just talking about everything from your day right. to what's going on and allowing that now actually happen and you'll learn a tremendous amount about that person by just being in the moment and enjoying this great time you get to have with this person having some coffee and talking about life right and that can be fun too yes. right because it's not um you know rigid you know like uh i know a lot of people feel a lot of pressure when they do the dinner date right right you know you're like sitting am i gonna like cut my food right am i gonna choke what should yeah, i order yeah, 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 yeah. right so this is a fun relaxed way to engage in what i call curious conversation yes because if you're authentically wanting to know who that person is then really in fact you're not interviewing them because yes. you just you want to know what they're like on the inside you're attracted to the outside you want to know more yeah i think if you just look at this person not as a potential mate but just as a person you're going to go hang out with and have fun, then you're yourself. Right. Then you're you're the cool, fun person that you are. And now it's not about, okay, what do I ask about this question? Do we move on to this? Do we move on to that? Just talk and hang out. Is this uh, another individual you get to hang out right. with? Now, if that kind of freaks you out, which is totally understandable, right. like the, the pressure of just us talking, then maybe you do do something like color me mine and go make right. some pottery together. <laughs> exactly. So then you have an action. You're painting these little pottery right, things. Right. You can paint go on each other. You look, yeah. yeah, go for a hike. And conversation will come out naturally. But... If it is a potential fit, those topics will come up naturally. I do think pushing those topics, and correct me if, if, if you think otherwise, that pushing those topics as in what are your goals, what's your faith, all these things, if you attack it directly, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think might uh, cause a little bit of friction or, or weirdness, especially in the first couple of Right, so, so ask open-ended questions. So example, if you were gonna say what are your goals, you know, what are you passionate about? What is your what is your passion and how does that connect with your job right now? What's your dreams? Sure. You know, things that are like that. So one other thing I wanna add before we wrap it up is is that so many people are dating to rule people out, mm, you know? Mm. And so rule people in, give them the chance. Yes. Three dates minimum. Three dates. Three dates. Go for coffee. Let If it's great, let the coffee date end there. Then empower the man to ask you out on another date and just get a really strong foundation and then go out and collect data and have more fun together. Because if in the first time you're kind of lukewarm, I think you do owe it uh, a couple more dates. Right. Because you never know what's going to happen. It's like you hear a song sometimes and the first time, oh, okay. The second time it's cool. Third time the song is like rocking. Now you you're can't like, stop listening to it. Yeah. That might be that dude who you went out with and you rate the date on a one to 10, you gave it a six, 
But then you go out a second time, you learn more about him, you guys both start to loosen up. By the third date, you guys are dropping down more of the barriers and really starting to enjoy each other as just people. So uh, there's a lot of uh, structures we put up sometimes in dating, and the more you get out there, those structures begin to fall. So give it three times unless it it is a complete Freddy Krueger nightmare. Right. No, you know, my first date with... um with Jeremy was coffee, and um, I didn't wasn't convinced it was a match. See, there you go. Went out with him again. And now look. No, true love. Peace. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.